A very good evening, everyone. I hope you all are doing good and preparing well for the upcoming RBI exam. I am Gulabsa, your mentor, and I welcome you all to the session called RBI 247. In today's session, we'll try to cover and discuss important concepts related to finance through multiple, quiz, multiple choice questions. But before getting started, there are some pieces of information for you guys. The first is that we have launched a complete crash course for both phase 1 and phase 2 of the RBI exam. Right now, it is available at massive discount. For further details, you can visit our website. Apart from that, we've also launched a special series known as the Descriptive Writing Course. This will help you write better answers for the phase 2 part of RBI exam. There are a total of 10 tests each for, for English as well as ESI and Finance and Management. Right now it is available at 50% discount. You can use the code given below to avail the benefit. Also, in case if you need any exam related updates, daily quizzes, topper strategies, past year question papers, live video session, you can get them all together at one place that is our Anujindal app, right? You can download it from the Play Store. So let's get started. So the first question on the screen says, recently RBI issued a detailed direction on the issuance and conduct of credit card business, credit as well as debit card business. In context of the above direction, which of the following is or are incorrect? Right. So recently RBI issued a master direction talking about the issuance and conduct of credit as well as debit card business. This has been in news for many days, right? So it is impor important for the upcoming exam. The statement given to us says the provision of credit and debit card will be applicable to all scheduled banks. For NBFCs registered with RBI, they can undertake the credit card business without the prior approval of RBI. And third, prior approval of RBI is not required to issue co-branded debit, credit or prepaid cards. The option given to us are given here, right? Now before answering the question, let us first see what was the master direction all about. So, the, so RBI has issued the master direction which will be effective from July 1, 2022, this year only. It talks about the issuance as well as the conduct of the credit and debit card business. Talking about the applicability, now provisions relating to credit card will be applicable to every scheduled bank as well as all the NBFCs. However, in case of scheduled banks, Payment bank, state cooperative, as well as district co cooperative banks are excluded, right? And any provision regarding to debit card issuance and conduct of business will be applicable to every bank that is operating in India. So this was all about the applicability. Usually a question on applicability is asked, right? Now talking about the conduct of credit card business. So first for the scheduled commercial banks. So any scheduled commercial bank having a net worth of 100 crore, right, can, can, can undertake the credit card business either independently or in a tie-up arrangement with a co-branding partner, right? So if, if a scheduled commercial bank has 100 crore net worth, then it can have credit card business. However, regional rural banks are excluded from this provision, right? Now talking about provision which is applicable to regional rural banks, it says that regional rural banks can also conduct the credit card business. However, they have to conduct in collaboration with the sponsor bank or any other bank, right? They cannot conduct it independently as it was in the case of scheduled commercial bank. They will have to require the collaboration of the sponsor bank or any other bank. Now, under the scheduled commercial bank, excluding the small finance bank and regional rural banks that are desirous of setting up a subsidiary, right? If a scheduled commercial bank wants to set up a subsidiary so that the main work of this subsidiary will be to conduct the credit card business, then it can do so. However, the prior approval of RBI will be required, right? If a scheduled commercial bank excluding the small finance bank as well as regional rural banks, if it wants to set up any subsidiary to conduct the credit card business, it will require the prior approval of RBI. Now talking about the urban cooperative bank, the same provision goes if it has a minimum net worth of 100 crore, right? Plus. If it is CBS enabled, what is CBS? It is core business solution, which will we will be discussing in the coming slide, right? 
and if a if an if a carbon cooperative bank having a minimum net worth of 100 crore plus see if it is cbs enabled right and it is financially as financially sound as well as managed then it can it can also conduct the credit card business however it can issue such credit card only to the regular members or to the nominal members right also the urban cooperative banks are not allowed they are prohibited from issuing any co-branded credit cards for example in the case of scheduled commercial bank they were they were eligible to conduct the credit card business either independently or in a tie up arrangement right in a co-branding arrangement with some brands however this provision is not applicable to the urban cooperative bank they can conduct the credit card only for the regular and nominal members right non members are not allowed and they are not allowed to issue any co-branded credit cards right also any urban cooperative bank right issuing the credit card their total unsecured loans and advances the total unsecured loans and advances that they have in their balance sheet unsecured loan and advances should not exceed 10 percent of their total assets right for example if the total asset of the bank is 100 crore right 100 crore then only up to 10 percent it can have that is 10 crore it can have under the unsecured loans and advances which will also include the credit card business i hope this is clear this is a bit factual so you need to listen carefully and keep the things in mind now talking about a core banking solution for example you all must have heard about sbi right the state bank of india it has many branches right it has many branches if all the networking of all these branches the networking of all these branches right the networking of all of all these branches which allows any customer to manage the account and use various banking facility allowing customer to use various banking facility and managing their account from any part of the world for example a person staying in us can also can also manage and undertake and use various banking facilities by sitting in us of an account in sbi in delhi right so the branches of of a bank are linked together are networked together at one place this is known as the core banking solution if we talk about rbi the apex the apex bank right if we talk about the central bank of our country that is that is rbi then the core banking solution is known by the name e kuber right please keep this in mind this question may come in exam as to what is the core banking solution of rbi known as known as it is known as e kuber where all the commercial banks all the commercial banks are networked together to rbi right and any commercial bank can have access to their account with rbi anytime and at any place right so this is the feature of core banking solution please keep in mind that e kuber is the core banking solution of rbi right likewise every bank having branches having many branches have their own cba system enabled now talking about the eligibility for nbfc we talked about scheduled commercial bank regional rural banks urban cooperative now we'll talk about nbfc now nbfcs can can undertake the credit card business however they will be requiring the prior approval of rbi without the prior approval of rbi nbfcs are prohibited from undertaking any credit or debit for that matter debit card business without the prior approval of rbi right now however if they want to issue however if they want to issue a credit card without a banking partner they can either issue through a banking card banking partner right or if they want to issue without a banking partner then they can do so but in that case also they will have to take the prior approval of rbi so one thing that you need to keep in mind regarding the nbfc is that if it wants to undertake any credit card or debit card business right any de credit card or debit card business then it will have to undertake the prior approval of rbi right now talking about uh, other features other details about the same any nbfc right any nbfc including a non-deposit taking right so nbfc that is not taking deposit can issue a credit card issuing a credit card will have to have 
a certificate of registration from RBI, right? And a minimum net owned fund of 100 crore. So any NBFC, right? Even those, uh, even those not taking or not accepting deposit can issue credit card, right? Can issue credit card or debit card. However, prior approval, prior, prior approval of RBI is required. And in case if it wants to issue a credit card, there are other eligibility. The first is that they need to have a minimum of 100 crore net on fund, right? And they will have to take, they will have to take a certificate of registration from RBI. If you talk about the present time, as of now, RBI has allowed only two NBFC to issue credit card without any banking partner. These are the SBI cards and the Bank of Baroda card. Right now, closure of credit card. If suppose a customer request, if suppose a customer, Mr. X, requests the bank that it does not want to have the credit card, then the banks are liable to honor his request within seven working days, subject that the payment, subject that the customer has made all the due payment on time. Right. Next, we talk about the issue of unsolicited facilities or the unsolicited cards what are unsolicited cards you might have seen in your family or you must have heard that banks what they do is without asking without asking the consent of the customer without asking the customer they issue the credit card in the name of the customer however now the such cards such rbi has prohibited bank to issue such unsolicited card where where the written where the where the written acceptance of the card holder is not taken rbi has prohibited the banks to issue such on unsolicited cards without seeking the explicit consent and how will the customer give the explicit consent by giving a signed acceptance right talking about the charges rbi has said that rbi has said that the card issuer company need to inform the card holders of the implication of payment of minimum amount due so what is this minimum amount due it is basically the minimum part the minimum part of the bill amount for example if suppose a bill of 10000 has been incurred on your credit card right so what the bank says is if you pay if you say for example 10 person if you pay 1000 rupees as of now then your card will be continuing right and however on the remaining 9000 additional charges are implied by the bank so what rbi has said that it has to it has to disclose every hidden charges or any charges that are undertaken in the name of minimum amount due so as to inform the card holder so as to inform the customer of any implication of paying the minimum amount due so what happens is the customer pays only 1000 the balance is carried on to the next month as well here also he will pay only the minimum amount due right so, so on the cumulative interest that the customer has to pay at one point or the other at one point or the other it will have to pay the payment right at that time it will have to pay exorbitant interest on such on such loan amount right so rbi has mandated to every card issuer that any any hidden charge any hidden charge or any any hidden charge or the 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 credit card which are, which are issued free of charge any hidden charges should be informed to the card holder well in advance including the minimum amount due right now we'll talk about the issuance of debit card as we have said the provisions of debit card issuance will be applicable to all banks right that are operating in india also for issuing of debit card by a bank prior approval of rbi is not required right the the debit card can be issued to customers who, who have the saving bank account or a current account however those customers who do not have a saving account they only have a cash credit or a loan account to to those customers debit card may not be issued apart from that the review the banks are required to undertake the debit card business undertake the operation of the debit card business on a half yearly basis now talking about co-branding arrangement so what is a co-branding arrangement let us first understand this so under a co-branding arrangement a bank a bank undertakes the credit card or the debit card business 
in partnership or in collaboration with other partners right now this partners can be uh, let's say food delivery app right or you can say airports right pvrs or any other partner right any other partner so in that case if a bank is issuing any co-branding arrangement card any co-branded cards right with a partner then in that case prior approval of rbi is not required please keep this in mind as we have studied in case of nbfc also prior approval of rbi was required however in case of co-branded cards in case of co-branded cards prior approval of rbi is not required the examiner can tweak in here right so you need to keep in mind that prior approval of rbi is not required in case of co-branded cards as well as in case of debit cards right also the urban cooperative banks we have studied this right urban cooperative ba banks are prohibited to issue any credit or debit card in any in any form of co-branding arrangement they cannot issue co-branded cards right so this point also you need to keep in mind so examples of co-branding card you must have seen this for example rbl bank has co-partnered has branded with zomato right to issue the co-branding credit card for in the same way ici bank is also partnered with amazon pay to issue the debit to issue credit card similarly you must have seen the kotak bank who has partnered with pvr to issue credit card they also offer benefit on issue, on using this card on such websites or apps or partner account right now from the same document from the same master direction we have read there is another question which which can come in exam right so the question says dash is the minimum part of the total bill amount that a card holder has to pay to not be treated as an overdue bill we have studied it here very very nicely that the answer is mad that is minimum amount due so the minimum amount due is the minimum part of the total billed amount right to the total expenditure which you have made under the credit card right if you pay that this minimum amount due then you will not then your then your bill amount will not be treated as an overdue bill for that particular month however there are implications of having such a facility because the, then the bank will be charging exorbitant interest on such billed amount right so this was fairly an easy question but however the term mad was mentioned so i thought of taking this question up here same we have discussed this the minimum amount due right and rbi is mandated the bank should not hide any hidden charges or even in that case while issuing any free free of charge credit cards now talking about the third question which says recently rbi has dashed the time taken for allotment and listing of reits and in which for the current requirement of dash to dash days the question says that rbi that cb SEBI has recently either increased or decreased the time taken for allotment and listing of REITs and invits right real what are REITs these are real estate investment trust and invits are infrastructure investment trust so the question says has SEBI increased or decreased the current time requirement so if we talk about the answer the news said that SEBI has decreased has reduced the time taken for allotment and listing of rits and invest right from earlier it was 12 working days under which the allotment and listing had to be done however sebi has now decreased this to 6 working days so the correct answer is b it has reduced from 12 days to 6 days right so talking talking about the news which was there same it has reduced the working time to 6 days against a current requirement of 12 working days right and this new rules will be applicable from june 1 2022 this year why has sebi cut the time limit for listing of rits and invits just as to so as to make the process more simpler as well as cost effective and to streamline the process of public issue of units of rits and invits to make this process simpler cost effective as well as to speed up 
the public issue of writs and invits sebi has cut the listing time for writs and invits so as you all know what writs and invits are just to give a brief description writs and invits are similar to mutual funds right these are similar to mutual funds these are innovative uh, investment vehicle wherein the sponsor tries to pool money right in case of writs it tries to pool money which are invested in real estate right tries to pool money from projects taken undertaken under the real estate category and based on it returns are given to the unit holder similarly in the case of invits as the name exclusively says it talks about infrastructure projects any money pooled from infrastructure projects right they are they come under the invits if we talk about april 2022 there are an overall of 19 invits and four rates in the indian market talking about the certain regulations of rates and invits they have similar regulation however the only difference is here it is real estate and here it is infra structure so any any company any rates and invits need to have to invest right need to have to invest at least 80% of their value of the rates infrastructure or infrastructure assets in completed and rent or income generating real estate right any any completed work uncompleted or incompleted work are not will not come under this if the work is completed if the real estate or the infrastructure project or the assets are 80% complete then only the reits can invest in here the maximum a maximum of 20% can be can be invested in the form of under constructed projects or mortgage back mortgage backed securities or government securities right now talking about the distribution policy minimum of 90% of the cash flow right minimum of 90% has to be distributed to the unit holder right only 10% can be kept by the sponsor bank however 90% of the cash flow or any profit need to be distributed to the unit holder right and in case of public offer what is the minimum value which it can offer it is 5000 million and the minimum subscription will be rupees 10 to 15000 per applicant having a trading lot of one unit right so minimum if you want to invest in reits right if you want to invest in reits or in wits a minimum of rupees 10 to 15000 will be required to invest in any of these right and talking about the listing requirement it has to be done mandatorily within 6 working days of the ipo closure now taking the last question for today the question says recently rbi has launched the may 2022 round of the inflation expectation survey of household right which organization has been entrusted to conduct the survey on behalf of rbi so rbi undertakes a lots of surveys right consumer survey then inflation expectation survey of, of household as well as industrial outlook survey right so all these surveys are undertaken by rbi and for this rbi rbi entrust certain agencies to undertake the survey on behalf of it so in the case of inflation expectation survey of households the agency which has been entrusted to conduct the survey is a hansa research group private limited genesis management has been has been entrusted to conduct the survey of industrial outlook survey right so you can keep this in mind as well right for however for the march 2022 round of the inflation expectation survey hansa research will be conducting it so talking a, a little about the uh, survey this is uh, rbi has launched it on 1st may the aim of the survey is to capture the subjective assessment of the household on price movement the survey explicitly says it talks about the inflation expectation of the household right so it will it will capture the qualitative part they will not ask the quantitative in terms of number but they will ask the subjective part as as what was the impact of the prices of the price movement in inflation on their consumption basket right and this survey is conducted across 19 cities of india right it will be a qualitative based response on price changes and inflation in the 3 month as well as in one one year 
दे विल आस्क फॉर थ्री मंथ्स के टाइम के अंदर आपके क्या एक्सपीरियंस है ऑफ द प्राइज मूवमेंट इम्पैक्ट एंड ऑल्सो फॉर द वन ईयर राइट and such any result which comes out of such survey will provide useful inputs for monetary policy uh, for rbi to undertake monetary policy for rbi the agency which has been entrusted is hansa research group private limited mumbai similarly hansa research group will also undertake the survey of consumer confidence survey this will also be a qualitative survey right which will try to extract information from household on general economic situation employment scenario price level and income and spending of the household right such survey helps the rbi to gain useful inputs useful insights for their monetary policy undertaking right this survey will also be conducted in 19 cities the name of the cities are mentioned here this is not so important you need to just remember who is the agency which has been undertake which, which has been entrusted the work of undertaking the survey for rbi in case of consumer confidence survey as well as in case of inflation expectation survey it will be conducted by hansa research group right however in case of industrial outlook survey the agency is genesis management and market research so this was all for today guys i hope you like the session in case of any doubt you can write in down in the comment section right i wish you all the very best for the upcoming exam thank you also if you need a free pdf of today's session you can join our telegram group all free pdfs are uploaded in the telegram group itself right bye bye take care